Hey everyone, and welcome back to Jim's EV Adventures. If you're new here, this is the place where we dive deep into electric vehicles and everything you need to know on how to make an informed decision about them. Today we're back at it, and we're going to bust five more myths about EVs. You might have heard these before, so let's break them down one by one. But before we do, I want to talk about the fact that the very people that complain the most about these videos say that our news media is fake. But when the news media reports bad things about EVs, they suck it down hook, line, and sinker. They believe everything they hear in the media about EVs. But everything else is fake. That's called duplicity. And I don't trust the news media at all. That's why I do my own research on all subjects. But let's get into these myths one by one. The first one that we're going to talk about today is EVs are just as bad for the environment because of the battery production. Boy, I hear this one all the time. One of the big ones that people love to bring up every time I talk about EVs is to talk about how much mining has to be done for the lithium that goes into the batteries and the cobalt and the manganese. Well, the good thing is cobalt, manganese, and nickel are going away, and people are moving towards the LFP battery, which is lithium iron phosphate. Iron is what goes into the engine of your car, so you shouldn't have a problem with that at all. Yes, building EV batteries, especially the mining for materials like lith lithium, cobalt, and nickel, does have an environmental impact. But so does mining for oil, like in the oil sands up in Canada. Are you aware that it takes two tons of minerals being moved to get one 42 gallon barrel of oil? But you don't have a problem with that if you're an ICE vehicle enthusiast. But studies show that when you compare the full life cycle of an EV to the internal combustion engine vehicle, EVs always come out ahead. Always. And I'm going to prove that. I'm going back to the studio and I'll put some graphics up and discuss it a little bit more there. Okay, we're back in the studio and we're going to talk about this in a little more detail. If you listen to organizations like the Manhattan Institute, they will tell you that 250 tons of the Earth's crust must be moved to make one EV battery. Well, my friends, that is just a ball-faced lie. The real number is closer to 30 tons and that is reduced each day as more and more economical means are used to extract the ores we need to make batteries. And as you can see earlier, if you were to get your gas exclusively from the tar sands, that would be about the equivalent of 15 tanks of gas. So please, my ICE vehicle enthusiast, quit using the same old tired arguments that are nonsense. It's not acceptable anymore. Once EVs are on the road, they're much cleaner to operate. Even in areas where electricity comes from fossil fuels, they still produce fewer emissions than traditional cars in that case as well. And the grid gets greener with renewable energy year after year. Do you realize that now almost 20% of the electricity in the United States of America comes from renewable energy? And by 2030, that number is going to be closer to 40%. But I digress. Let's talk about the second myth. The second myth that I would like to talk about is something that we discussed in last week's video, which seemed to have raised the ire of a bunch of ICE vehicle enthusiasts, which I don't really care, they're bullies. So here we go. Second myth is charging takes too long. A lot of people think that charging an EV will leave you sitting around for hours waiting for your car to get ready to roll. But the reality is charging de time depends on when and where you charge your electric vehicle. Just take a look at some of these charging stations that I'm rolling in over my shoulder here. At home, if you're using a standard level one charger, yes, it's gonna take you hours to charge, typically overnight, depending on how many miles you drive, it might take eight hours. But if you install a level two charger, which is something you can plug into a 1450 outlet, which is the same outlet you use for your dryer, then you can charge in as little as three to four hours and sometimes even less. 
And if you're on the road, there's DC fast chargers that can give you up to 80% charge in between 20 and 40 minutes. A little bit longer for the Bolt EV. Think of it like this most of the time. You'll be charging at home while you are asleep, just like your smartphone. Guarantee you, most of you are probably watching this on a smartphone. When do you charge it? While you're sleeping. For long road trips, fast chargers are there when you need a quick top up, similarly to stopping at a gas station for a quick fill up. In this case though, you're gonna stop and go in and get something to eat, use the restroom, stretch, do whatever you need to do. We've talked about this a thousand times. Typically, 20 minutes is about all you're gonna stop at the most when you're charging your electric vehicle out on the road. I've also talked about this several times and I'm kind of getting sick and tired of it, but you know, I hear it all the time. There just are not enough charging stations. To which I say, think of it uh, like this. If you run out of charge while you're out on the road, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna be somewhere within 20 miles of a charger, whether that's a level two charger or a DC fast charger. In fact, it is now so dense with DC fast chargers east of the Mississippi River, you're never more than 75 miles away from one, even in the what formerly was the black hole of uh, eastern Louisiana and western Mississippi. That's starting to fill in quite nicely. Right now, there are literally tens of thousands of public charging stations across the U.S. and even more globally. Companies like Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo, and Tesla are continually adding chargers to their networks. Apps like PlugShare help you locate that nearest charger. And many EVs come with a navigation system that fixes the ability for you to just plug in where you're at and it'll find a DC fast charger for you and you can navigate to it using their navigation app. So while charging stations may not be on every corner like gas stations are, they're popping up in more convenient places like malls and workplaces, restaurants, and with ongoing investment, the number of chargers will only keep growing exponentially. <sighs> now let's talk about something that I don't really have to worry about here too much in Florida. EVs don't perform well in cold weather. It's the myth that EVs can't handle the cold weather that seems to be the biggest one, especially after last winter, what happened up in Chicago where people were backed up with their vehicles basically frozen because they failed to plan. And it goes back to the old adage, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And they failed because they did not adequately charge their cars with the approach of an Arctic outbreak. That's first and foremost, that's something you should do. But people think that when the temperature drops, an EV loses all of its range. It's true that cold weather does affect battery performance just like it affects your gasoline car. You do not get as good a gas mileage when it's extremely cold than you do when it's temperate like it is right here in Florida right now. In colder climates, you may see a reduction in range, but it's usually in the neighborhood of 10 to 20%, not 60 to 70% like you hear in the news media. Again, our media is laughable at this point in time. With charging stations more available more than ever, driving an EV in winter is no problem at all with just a little bit of planning. And here's another of my favorite myths. EVs will overload the electrical grid, to which I say, Firmly. Actually, the grid can handle it. Utility companies have been preparing for the rise in EVs for a very long time, over a decade. And studies show that even with millions of EVs on the road, the increase in electrical demand will be manageable, completely manageable. Plus, as we shift to renewable energy like wind and solar, 
the grid will become even more resilient. And with innovations like, I don't know what you call it, uh, the smart charging, EVs can charge during off-peak hours when there's less demand, like I do every night. I typically charge between midnight and five o'clock in the morning. I charge from the base load. And unlike water, when you turn the spigot off, the water stops. And when you turn it back on, the water comes out. Electricity does not work that way. Electricity is there all the time, and the base load, whether it is used or not, is created. So overnight, during the overnight hours, I charge from base load, making use of energy that would have otherwise gone to waste. EVs can charge quickly during off-peak hours because typically there's not a lot of demand for electricity, so you can set your charger to 40, 50, even 60 amps and charge more quickly in the overnight hours. That's another plus. Well, that's it for today's myth-busting session. If you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Drop your thoughts and myths that you've heard in the comments below, and I'll try to address those in future videos as well. Remember, treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same for you. Again, thank you very much for stopping by today. We look forward to seeing you again in the very near future or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody. See you all real soon.